Star JTF capable headquarters in all of the AFRICOM area of responsibility. We now have full administrative control and training readiness authority over the 173rd Airborne Brigade, and we ensure that the 173rd is trained and ready for crisis response and contingency operations to include the ability to support the North and West African response force that we call the NARF. And finally, we're responsible for the oversight of all Army activities and personnel in Italy, who is a critical NATO ally. So that's a big mission with a big footprint, and we rely on the work of our teammates in the intelligence enterprise to make sense of this environment and to make better decisions faster than our competitors and our adversaries. Today you will hear from one of our operational subordinate commands, the 207th Theater Military Intelligence Brigade. The 207th conducts military and intelligence analysis, collection, and exploitation in support of CTAF-AF and AFRICOM. It's one of 17 brigades belonging to U.S. Army Intelligence and Security Command, INSCOM. And we're really proud to have a close relationship with INSCOM, and we leverage the intelligence capabilities that the 207th brings to the fight to accomplish our mission in Africa. What's remarkable is that the 207th is the smallest theater MI brigade in all of INSCOM, but it has the widest coverage. A full spectrum of intelligence support that connects and delivers the intelligence enterprise to the AFRICOM theater. That's an area about three and a half times as big as the continental United States with 53 sovereign nations and five regions, each with a unique history, culture, and political system. It's a challenging environment for, in for intel collection. It's an area where our near-peer competitors are actively seeking to influence events on the ground through diplomacy, disinformation, economic leverage, and military presence, much of it malign. An area where violent extremist organizations continue to be a persistent threat destabilizing fragile governments and expanding their safe havens while opening space for our competitors. The 207th helped CTAF-AF and AFRICOM understand these activities and the range of threats to U.S. interests and those of our African partners. Today you will hear about one of our unique capabilities. The Africa Data Science Center, or ADSC, is a pilot program that leverages data science to help analysts quickly understand and exploit the massive amount of data that is currently available to the intelligence community. This capability as a pilot is a game changer for us. The ADSC enables traditional intelligence collection methods in Africa's resource-constrained environment where we can't always rely on ISR assets. This program supports one of the Secretary of the Army's primary objectives to ensure that the Army becomes more data-centric and can conduct operations in contested environments. What is really exciting is this approach is exportable to the rest of the Army and the DOD enterprise, and in particular to other areas of responsibility where the U.S. military anticipates and in fact is, con is operating in contested environments every day. We see a lot of opportunity for this program, and I know that INSCOM is looking at opportunities to expand its reach. I now want to turn the floor over to the real expert, Colonel Mark Denton. He'll provide a more detailed view on how the ADSC program actually works and then we'll have an opportunity for a few questions and answers, and we look forward to that dialogue. Thanks very much for your attention, and please welcome Colonel Denton. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As uh, Colonel Wasman, uh, pointed out, General Wasman pointed out, I'm Colonel Mark Denton, commander of the 207th Military Intelligence Brigade. And uh, today I'll be talking to you about the Africa Data Science Center. Uh, but before we get started, uh, one of the individuals I also have here with me is uh, Mr. J.T. Gill. Uh, J.T. is um, my senior civilian, and uh, he's been around since we started with the Africa Data Science Center. Um, let me uh, get this tablet up, and uh, then we will continue. Well, it's a good thing that I have a backup because the tablet is down right now. So, JT, we will go to the notes. So, as uh, General Wasman said, I am uh, Colonel Mark Denton, and uh, I am the commander of the 207th Military Intelligence Brigade. Today, we're going to be talking about the Africa Data Science Center. And as I talk about that, uh, one of the things I do want to let you know is that uh, we are headquartered in uh, Vicenza, Italy as the 207th Military Intelligence Brigade. Not a bad assignment there in Vicenza, Italy. Uh, and one of the things I'll also make sure that you understand is it is late in the day here, but it's even later in Italy, so jet lag is kicking in right now. So 
Uh, bear with me uh, this evening, and uh, we'll get started. So, again, um, as General Wasman mentioned, we are uh, one of 17 of INSCOM, the Intelligence Security Command's uh, brigade, uh, brigades that's out there. And uh, we are the theater intelligence uh, brigade that is assigned to the Africa Combatant Command Area of Responsibility and further operationally command by the Southern uh, uh, European Task Force, as you just heard from General Wasman. Our Warrior Corner, again, is focused on using data science as an intelligence multiplier. Our Africa Data Science Center, or the ADSC as we will call it, is not on our EMTO, Modified Table of Organization and Equipment, so that is an out of hide uh, uh, activity that we've, uh, we, we've had to do. And is currently a three-person uh, team within our analysis and control element, our ACE, uh, which is an element within our operations uh, battalion. Um, go to the next slide, please. What's the situation? So as you can see on this slide, uh, it shows the chart of our ADSC. Uh, the ADSC, again, is led by a captain and a warrant officer and supported by three contract uh, data science engineers. Uh, so, but before we dive into that, what I do want to do is I do want to play this video real quick for you. So uh, go ahead real quick and roll the video, please. And turn it up as loud Sergeant, as you can. Sergeant, what's the situation? Correct. Uh, Historic first, uh, and in response to Russia's unprovoked... Uh, 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 ...request of the federal government to Somalia, and in coordination with the U.S. mission to Somalia, the C-130 takes from the weapon and travel puddles to the time when passing this part of Africa, loaded with metal and metal supplies, in response to the Hey, I can help you narrow this down. Information to insight. Chaos to clarity, geography to geos. We are the Africa Data Science Center, transforming data into decision advantage. Did the G Army G2's relevant deep sensing um, at, the, at the Edge Warriors Corner. Uh, you heard Alex Miller as he artfully and eloquently articulated that we don't have a data problem, is what he said. We have, uh, you know, what do we do with the data problem, um, which is much different. Our intelligence analyst has a uh, data overload problem, as you saw there uh, inside the video. So therefore, the Africa Data Science Center has been important to the uh, workflow and production for our analysts, as you heard General Wasman uh, so artfully articulate earlier. A little bit of background on the Africa Data Science Center. The ADSC is an INSCOM pilot program which started in 2018 and continues today with INSCOM, AFRICOM, and CTAF uh, funding uh, that important capability. So, uh, General Wasman mentioned a little bit, but let me just tell you, Africa lies at a global crossroads. It holds tremendous geostrategic significance while being shaped by competing forces of prosperity, poverty, and also conflict that we see on a daily basis. Across the continent, all 54 countries, uh, CTFF and the 207th uh, MI Brigade uh, Enterprise provide cutting edge information that regularly impacts uh, national level decisions on a daily basis. The 207th Amaya Brigade's Africa Data Science Center uses machine learning techniques to quickly scrutinize large sums of data, eliminate redundancies, and provide relevant information in a usable format. The ADSC leverages best practices from across the intelligence community and applies leading-edge data science techniques 
to fulfill operational intelligence requirements to operational commanders like General Wasserman within our theater. As an out of high data science support cell, as previously mentioned, with a startup mentality, this unique program received recognition by the House Armed Services Committee in the FY22 National Defense Authorization Act. The NDAA lauded the ADSC for serving as a model of innovation and in providing invaluable clarity on adversary activities across Africa. You heard General Wasman mention this capability is not specific just to Intel or specific just to CTAF. This capability can be exported to other environments and other theaters as well. Yesterday in the opening ceremony, we heard the Secretary of the Army lay out her priorities. The ADSC is one small but innovative example of how the 207th is meeting the Secretary of the Army's objective number two to become more data-centric at Echelon. We accomplished this by using machine learning, advanced analytics, data visualization tools, and most importantly, intelligence domain expertise to build products that enable analysts to sort through vast amounts of data, spot trends easier, and ask more informed questions to get to the so what side of the equation a lot quicker. As you saw in the video, our analysts can be overwhelmed by the volume and variety of data available to them on a daily basis. One way the ADSC has tackled this problem is by building software categories and curate tens of thousands of reports for analysts in just a few minutes. This would normally take analysts days or weeks to organize that amount of information before analyzing it. As an example, the ADSC can easily consolidate over 3,000 reports in a matter of seconds. Go to the next slide, please. As we talk about transforming data into the intelligence process, uh, this, the, so the ADSC is not a standalone. The ADSC is embedded and incorporated into the intelligence cycle and everything that we do on a daily basis as it integrates with the analysts and not separated from the analysts. So ultimately, the ADSC is focused on using modern tools to solve complex intelligence process. To do this, we had to adapt the traditional software development practices to fit the Army intelligence cycle, as you see there depicted on the slide. By in integrating data science into the intelligence process, at various echelons of command, the ADSC supports both analysis and operations through tight integration with the CTAF commander's requirements or whatever your entity is, their requirements, and the objectives within our analysis and control element uh, in our battle rhythm events. So this is scalable and tailorable to your specific requirements and environment and to your commander's needs. For instance, the ADSC helps senior leaders in the Africa community of interest better understand complex problems such as the evolving violent extremist organization threat and near-peer adversary Russia and China and their activities within the Africa area of responsibility. One of the most critical parts of the integrating advanced analytics with intelligence is understanding the problem. Without deep domain expertise, i.e. the analysts, we're going to develop things that end up off the mark. So the analysts have to be involved in what you develop uh, as an Africa, as a data science or data scientist. The analysts have the expertise, while the data scientists have programming expertise. So they're, they're not one and the same. Okay, so you do need that expertise on both sides. Before we start using machine learning, coding, and big data techniques, we have to understand our customers' requirements or our commanders' requirements and needs. Consideration for handling sensitive data permeate every step of data science integration from how we get the data to what happens after we transform, disseminate, and store that data. While many of the Africa data, Africa data science tools are used on uh, TS systems or JWICs, the information often used at the, is often used at the collateral level and can be made appropriate at any other level 
again, based on the needs and requirements of the commander. The ADSC uses existing platforms where feasible, and where not feasible, they also can create their own uh, versions of a platform. The Africa Data Science is an, is an enabler first and foremost. Our team integrates our work with the IC, so along the intelligence community, community-wide platforms and partners, uh, we will utilize those first. So whether it's uh, Fade Miss, Bodhi, Gemma, Safe House, Gets, ArcGIS, Chrome, some of the more familiar, Crate, et cetera, some of those more familiar tools and platforms, that's what we tend to use on a routine and daily basis to be able to integrate with the rest of the IC. The ADSC pushes and pulls data in various formats while transforming it en route to meet the needs of the production requirement uh, of our consumer. Our soldiers are not equipped or trained to do uh, that task. So the intel professional is not trained at Fort Huachuca to be able to do the work of the, the engineers or the scientists. So I don't want you to confuse that we're now turning uh, our, fo our soldiers, our 35 foxes that's trained at Fort Huachuca into uh, data scientists. And we can talk about that a little bit more. In addition, although the Africa Data Science Science Center isn't a traditional int. Again, it's not an int by itself, uh, and we can have that debate about open source also, uh, but we take all that information that's available out there, and it's not a traditional int by itself. However, uh, and it doesn't produce and disseminate traditional intelligence products, but they do build tools to support and enable the analysts in ways you can't buy off the shelf. The ADSC does not replace the analysts, again. Uh, rather, they work with the analysts who contribute deep regional expertise, which cannot be replaced uh, by, uh, by a scientist. Go to the next slide, please. Uh, here's a vignette. Uh, and again, as you heard in the video, we talk about going from uh, chaos to clarity. On the right-hand side there, you see all that purple stuff. That's all the stuff that comes in that an analyst needs to uh, that's all the chaos, and an analyst needs to make sense of that uh, so we can inform folks like uh, General Wasman. So another major tenant of the Africa Data Science Center is uh, work to simplify and organize the tremendous amount of data available to our organization. The idea is to get our analysts to, uh, to the starting line a lot quicker, uh, allowing them to focus on analy analytical part of intelligence work and let computers do the manual uh, repetitive task. So we'll do that through machine learning. So time and time again, we heard from analysts that it can be difficult to accurately assess trends with so much data available out there to them on a daily basis. You saw the analysts again in the video with all that information coming in, and he's got it, folks just asking him, what's the answer, what's the answer? Well. He can't begin to start doing the analytical work because he's just sifting through data, and oftentimes a lot of that data is the same repetitive reports that are coming in, but they're coming in different forms from different entities. The graphic on the slide shows the chaos that too much data can bring. The ADSC uses a series of machine learning models to automatically characterize thousands of reports for analysts, excuse me, allowing them to focus on analytical task at hand and get out of the blocks a lot faster. This machine learning system uses natural language processing, which is essentially, uh, put in, in elementary terms, turning words into numbers and then doing the math immediately after that to put intelligence reports uh, into categories based on mathematical similarities uh, to a baseline. That's the easiest way to explain that. We then take those curated reports and let the analysts interact with the data in a way that makes sense to them, either through a dashboard or an Excel spreadsheet, uh, whatever format uh, they prefer. Uh, this goes back to where I started with the comments about uh, sense, uh, making sense, and then acting. So you sense the data, you try to make sense of it by binning it or categorizing it, and then you're able to give it to commanders to be able to act on uh, that data based on the predictive analysis that comes from that. This program was developed at CTAFF by the ADSC with the direction from analysts and the theater leadership and is designed to help our folks 
um, at the big picture of what's happening on the continent within the context of Army doctrine and also our intelligence trade calf. So trying to nest all those things together. Uh, and this can be done in any theater, uh, whether you're in the Pacific or whether you're in UCOM or other theaters, you can do the same exact thing. So as I get on short final here and, and, and try to wrap up, uh, let me just recap what I really just said. If you take, took nothing else away in the last you know, 10 minutes or so, what I'm telling you is um, in the last 10 minutes, the U.S. AFRICOM AOR is a vast and complicated environment that possesses significant challenges to U.S. interests and requires unique processing methods to gain the information advantage. When we talk about spread across such a large array of, uh, of environment, over 54 countries, sometimes 55, depending on who you ask on what day, uh, it is challenging to be able to get all that information in a usable form to our commanders on a daily basis. And the Africa Data Science Center is a force multiplier in CTAF's arsenal to exploit and maximize tangible insights from the massive amount of data currently available to the intelligence community. Emerging technologies continue to increase the amount of data the Joint Force has at its disposal, making previously inaccessible insights a daily occurrence. The rapidly developing field of data science will provide decision advantage to commanders at the Unified Command and theater echelons. Theater-embedded teams ensure technical expertise is co-located with regional subject matter experts, allowing for quick prototyping of unique data science solutions to meet the commander's evolving information requirements. As I said, in closing, the Africa Data Science Center has a bright future. With the increased intelligence production it allows, we've only begun to scratch the surface of the ADSC's capabilities. In the future, we would like to see data sharing through technical reach back to a hub and tie in with other ADSCs across the enterprise in more of a hub and spoke model. Right now, we are essentially a silo uh, and there aren't other ADSCs out there where we can tie into in a hub-and-spoke model. Um, but right now, I'll tell you, though, the INSCOM G7, uh, under the direction of INSCOM, is working through that. And I know some folks at Fort Huachuca are also working this, where they're exploring concepts uh, for an enterprise approach to Africa Data Science Center and more of a, um, a data science hub across uh, the entire uh, community. So the capability to process so much data independently through machine learning is the way ahead uh, that will allow analysts to spot emerging trends and support commanders' intelligence requirements much quicker. Uh, using the lessons learned since its inception in 2018, the Africa Data Science Center program can be applied to other national security and regional challenges. So let me just uh, 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 say one final comment, and then we'll open up for questions. And I'll also turn it over to my senior civilian, see if he's got any comments he wants to make. But I do know that folks out of Fort Huachuca, uh, General Hale's making a lot of progress on this in terms of making our individuals more data literate. Uh, and that's really important. Um, so the leaders out there, the lieutenants, captains, even the the soldiers, as they go through training, they're getting a lot of this information on understanding data and how to um, exploit and utilize that data and becoming more data literate. Uh, so there are um, a lot of folks that's making a lot of efforts on this. And uh, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, JT, do you have anything before we close? Go to the next slide, please. Nothing additional at this time, sir. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and open up for any questions that anyone has. Can we get a microphone? Hi, uh, Todd, South Army Times. I have two questions real quick. Um, one, you mentioned that this is um, exportable. Uh, you also mentioned it was siloed because there's not a hub necessarily. So I guess first off, do these exist in other uh, combat commands, uh, yet they're just not connected? Or is this solely an enterprise only for Africa and not replicated elsewhere at all? So for us right now, and I'll have JT also comment because JT's been doing this. Uh, he's been part of it since 2019. But for us, um, we are not connected to other uh, data science center. 
were connected to other individuals, like folks in, in, in the soft community, they have a similar capability, but there isn't a hub at the top that has the ability, like a hub and spoke, to be able to manipulate and push in and pull data from each of the elements and then tie it together at the top. So no, there isn't others that are doing the exact same thing. There are others that do some elements of it, but not uh, to the level that we're, uh, we're more efficient, where everybody is tied in and we are, we are interwoven, where we're actually able to exploit all the data across the entire community, so no. Thank you. And just one, uh, one separate question. Um, as far as the vignette you shared, what is the audit process to ensure that what you discovered was accurate after the fact? So, a couple of things. So, the audit process is really um, uh, reaching out to other entities, um, other data scientists within the community, uh, such as folks within the GeoInt community. I've got one of the doctors back there. Uh, he can tell you and, and, and utilize them as the experts in each of their different disciplines to be able to help us make sure uh, that we're doing that correctly. So they help us with that audit process. And there's a, com there's a community of folks out there that are doing data science. Uh, they're just not all collectively together where it's all integrated, which uh, I think about two weeks ago, maybe a month ago, they had a symposium on data science where they brought all these individuals together and they talked about best practices. This Africa Data Science Center was one of those that was briefed at that symposium. I don't know if uh, Gus Wright is here. He may want to elaborate a little bit more. Can we get Gus a mic? Because I do know that Gus was in that symposium also with my uh, data scientists. At, uh, at yeah, the same okay. time. Gus, anything? Yeah, I got some, sir. Can, can you guys hear me okay? Uh, to answer your question more, that audit after the fact, uh, here's how machine learning uh, works. Uh, uh, a machine learning model is essentially a computer coded model of the human brain, right? And it has neurons and synapses, but it's written in ones and zeros. So whenever someone makes a discernment and say, hey, here's the answer that this data is telling us to, after the fact, you can then go back and correct the model based on the accuracy. Then in the future, the model becomes a better model, if that makes sense. So that auditing process is circular in, in so many words. And uh, to answer the Colonel's uh, question, tons of collaboration, because uh, that deep domain knowledge is such an important asset. You know, it's almost easier to teach, um, when, in terms of data literacy, someone who's been doing something like what I do, geospatial sciences or geospatial engineering, it's almost easier to teach me to, to code than it is to teach me the science. So it's, it's a little bit of correction that we'll have to do in the future to ensure that as we train our soldiers and as we uh, cultivate a paradigm shift and the approach to answering intelligence questions in the future, we'll have to cultivate this skill set as an essential body of knowledge going forward while leaning on experts that have been doing data engineering for the time being, if that makes sense. No, thanks, Gus. Uh, that, that, that was absolutely spot on. And that's why we need to collaborate with folks like Gus and others within uh, the, the data science arena. It, it's a collaborative effort, and it's not just one individual. Uh, but yes, uh, that's why I say that ours is a silo, but we do collaborate across the IC. JT, you had something? Can you hear me? Uh, there we go. Hi, I'm JT Gill, senior civilian at the 207. So getting to your question, um, provenance of data, especially when you're talking about uh, unclassified data, like the data that you saw there that's generally um, drawn from ACLED, and when you use machine learning and natural la language, which are naturally going to get a circular reporting, right? And it may be incorrect right from the start. But the beauty of where it's located within the ACE is that we also have an integrated GWINT uh, detachment, right? And we also have our other intelligence capabilities like our TK on the SIGINT side, and then also our human. And so what we're able to do then is to establish the provenance and the, and the, and the actual progeny of the data to actually get some true ground truth. Um, and ultimately, you have to have analysts to be able to do that. Um, so it's not just putting in data science and, and, and generating a computer code, because all the computer code's gonna do is say this one's like all the rest, right? And if it's like all the rest and it's circular or in, uh, incorrect from the beginning, you get an incorrect answer. 
And so really it's about um, having the analysts there with the data science scientists to be able to understand the data, be data literate on the uh, analyst side of the house, and then for the data s scientists to be able to understand the correct question. Because ultimately at the end of the day, when they write a computer code to go do something, they're asking questions of the data. But if you ask the wrong question, you get the wrong answer. Hey, that's an important point that JT made. Uh, bad data in means bad data out. Um, and so, you know, it goes back to what we talked about, um, you know, what I heard yesterday from Alex Miller. Um, what problem are you trying to solve? Um, and, and it's not that, you know, we, we've got a data problem and we just have to make sure that we're able to solve it. And this is one of the ways that we get after it. But you've got to have the right individuals uh, and the data scientists, data en engineers, we absolutely need them. Now, earlier I was talking to someone and they asked, well, uh, why don't we just have a bunch of data scientists and start making Intel analysts data scientists? No. I heard you heard somebody say yes. No, absolutely not. Uh, we need Intel analysts to be experts in the region and understand the region. We don't need more, uh, you know, data scientists. Okay? You need maybe one or two of those. For, for us, we've got three of them, uh, and, and, and that suffices. And if we had a hub, we could probably go down to two, okay? But what we need them to do is sit side by side with our analysts, and then the analysts who are data literate understand what they're talking about to be able to tell them, this is the outcome that I want to achieve, and then they do you know, the coding and the prototyping and says, okay, this is what I can spit out for you, this is what we can do. Oh, you had uh, 10,000 reports, well, about 6,000 of those reports were duplicate. We were able to get rid of those. Those are reports that the analyst does not have to read or deal with at that point. Otherwise, if you're doing the, we can't go back to just doing acetates anymore. Okay, we can't go back to that and then have the analysts in the back just slopping through reports manually or using their own uh, Excel spreadsheet where they're, you know, just manually going through or creating their own pretend code, okay? okay. Uh, we've got to have experts who are trained to do that and able to do that in a matter of uh, minutes and sometimes seconds. Okay, next question, please. Sir. Hey, sir. This is, uh, I'm Chief Chadwick. Uh, I'll come at you from that side. I'm the Armor Reserve 75th Innova Innovation Command. Uh, I used to be supporting 513th MI Brigade, so I, I feel a lot of this, and I think you guys are on the right track. I have one question for you, though. Who is your data product owners? Is that the chief warrant officers in there? No. Um, so the data product owners is really our, uh, our data scientists. Uh, they're the ones that curate, and they're the ones that are in charge of all the data. Now, it's under the purview of the ACE chief who runs the ACE. Um, but in terms of uh, is it the, the senior warrant officer within the ACE, no, not at this time. But that's something I'll, I'll go back and take a look at. No, thanks for bringing that up. Questions, please. Question over here on the right side. Thanks a lot. Uh, sorry, this is a question that's a bit broader than some of the ones that have been asked already. Um, I'm just wondering how you integrate this with other countries such as Australia, especially under the AUKUS agreement, and uh, what sort of challenges you face in doing that? Are some of them just uh, bureaucratic? Okay, JT, since we talked about that one earlier, I'll let you take that one. Okay, uh, that, that's a fantastic question, right? Um, because ultimately, uh, when, we, when we go to, to look at a problem, right, our analysts are asked to look at, at all the data, right, not just the data that, that fits uh, what's releasable to our partners or whatever it may be. That being said, right, depending upon the environment they're in and depending upon our product, we're going to write it uh, to be releasable. So whether or not to be able to put it on Stone Ghost or any of the other systems that could be accessible uh, by our, by our par partners. Um, the, one of the ways in which it really gets uh, especially for our African partners uh, in collaborating with them, 
is that one of the ways that this translates down is that when our analysts are actually teaching them analysis, probably without even thinking about it, one of the things that they're asking about is what is the data sources that you have? And then they're already thinking data science type things, like what could you do with this data if, you, if I had this data? And um, because they may not be in our systems, they may be in their systems, and so we're actually uh, teaching our partners to actually be data literate and to think about the possibilities of it. Um, a lot of times they do not have the advanced tools that our analysts have, have access to. So um, for any one given problem of these, there's probably between 20 to 30 uh, different data sets and tools that they're gonna use for any different, any any specific problem, um, but those are tools that are already developed in some of the partner nations where we're we're, we're actually working. Um, they're not going to have those tools, and so really it's going to be about, okay, how do you think about this data, and then do you have your own integral data scientist to be able to do that? Um, on the larger scale, with our with our foreign partners. That's already happening in terms of our intelligence sharing agreements that already exist, right? So on the SIGINT side of the house, on the GEOINT side of the house, some of that is already happening at the Five Eyes level. Um, at the data science level, uh, that would be more of a mill-to-mill -mill, uh, type arrangement. Uh, does that answer the question? Okay. JT, thank you. Hey, I want to thank everybody for your attention. It I want to remind you also that this, what this does is it transforms chaos into clarity. It really is helpful. With a theater as big as we have, a theater as complex as we have, the ability to gain information advantage over our adversaries, to think, to have clarity faster than our, our adversaries can achieve it. This is, the, this is the secret sauce of the 207th MI Brigade. It's a pilot, and we're looking to learn about it. We're looking to export, ex export this around the, the other MI Brigades around the Army. So I just want to thank JT and Mark for, for sharing this with us. We appreciate your questions and help us learn about it. Uh, so we're excited about it, we hope you are. Hope you have a great afternoon and enjoy the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the AUSA. Thank you.